Dear beautiful and radiant viewers, welcome to the 32nd episode of Art and Dharma, where we will talk about the connections or interplay between art and Dharma. My name is Victor Gabriel and I am a lecturer at Sakya Buddha University in Santa Ana, California. You can reach me through my email awake.star.sky at gmail.com. In episode 32, I would like to discuss Amitabha Buddha, the iconography, their role in Buddhist cosmology, their devotional practices and significance. This episode and episode 31 are artworks based on meditation practices. Here, the practice is of Amitabha Buddha at the time of death. This artwork is known as Amitabha Buddha welcoming their followers. Followers of Pure Land sect of Buddhism believe at the moment of death, Amitabha Buddha will descend from his paradise to receive the soul or consciousness of a faithful follower. This painting depicts, depicts Amitabha Buddha floating downwards on clouds. He is accompanied by two attendant Bodhisattvas, Avalokiteshvara or Kuan Yin, which we saw in episode 23, and Prata, who represents the power of wisdom. His name means the arrival of great strength and is sometimes known as a form of Vajapani. They are surrounded by other Bodhisattvas and Asparas playing musical instruments and carrying banners. A Bodhisattva holds out a lotus for the recently departed to step on. Below are the family of the departed. It is believed that the departed upon receiving this lotus will be transported into Amitabha's pure land by this sacred entourage. Further information about Pure Lands can be found in episode 24. Let us now look at the practice of Amitabha. Pure Land teachers teach that while we still need to work on ourselves to get to Amitabha Pure Land, there is no shortcut, jump over or discount to the number of realizations we need to obtain. Amitabha's Pure Land is called the, great, the Land of Great Bliss or Delight Sukhavati. This Pure Land provides the best environment for us to further our Buddhist practice. To get there, we have to practice now and to take advantage of our lives at the present. Ordinary people think that Amitabha's Pure Land is a physical place. The actual pure land is the ultimate nature of our own mind. We develop will, wisdom realizing emptiness that purifies the mind completely. The, that wisdom transforms into the wisdom of Dhammakaya, the truth body of the Buddha. The true cessations and emptiness of the mind transforming into the nature body of the Buddha. Here, the body means a collection of qualities. It doesn't mean a physical body. The two physical bodies of manifestation bodies of the Buddha are the enjoyment body and the emanation body, the body that the Buddha appears in to communicate with sentient beings. Attaining these four bodies are what is the actual pure land. To do the Amitabha practice, we have to aspire to be born in Sukhavati so that we can actualize that pure land. Amitabha is also one of the five Buddha families. This is a different practice from the practice of Amitabha and aspiring to go to the pure land. Here the Buddha is in the Namakaya form, which is his emanation form as a monk. Amitayas or the bliss body of the of is of him. Amitayas means infinite light, while Amitabha means infinite light. 
they are the same, just different aspects. There are descriptions of how to do this practice and they are found in three Amitabha Sutras. There is a smaller and a larger as well as um, often people recite the entire sutra. The idea being that while reciting it, you are imagining the Buddha, the Bodhisattvas and the Pure Land. We are imagining that being in the Pure Land ourselves and being in the presence of Amitabha. In addition to these three Amitabha Sutras, the Amitaya's Meditation Sutra, pure Birth in the Pure Land, is also mentioned in other sutras. For example, the Vimalarikiti Sutra, the Prajna Paramita Sutras, the Surangama Sutra, and the Lotus Sutra. Pure Land teachers say that there are four causes for rebirth in Sukhavati. First is the aspiration to be born there. Clearly, if we don't aspire for something, it is not going to happen because we won't create the causes for it. Depend developing that aspiration. The second is visualizing Amitabha Buddha and their pure land in our minds. This means creating the feeling like we are in the pure land sitting in Amitabha's presence. Yes, the imagination is a mental skill and helps us sharpen our mind and our meditative ability. We do it for the purpose of creating a certain ambience in our mind, a certain feeling in our mind. The third is to avoid negative actions and to practice virtuous ones. Even if we want to be born in a pure land, we cannot go around and create lots of negative karma and think that Amitabha Buddha was uh, going to appear to us at the time of our death. We still need to create the causes for that. To do this, we need to create a virtuous basis. That is to abandon negativity, to create virtuous actions. That will help us physically and psychologically as well. The fourth cause is to develop bodhicitta. We can read about the benefits of bodhicitta and put it into practice and see how bodhicitta transformed our life. The Amitabha practice is based on three Pure Land Sutras. The display of the Pure Land of Sukhavati, catalogue number TOH115, is the shortest of the three sutras that expound the land of delight or bliss, the pure realm of Amitabha called Sukhavati. The Tibetan canon includes translations of these two texts, the one is called shorter and the one called longer. The longer one has the formal title of Array of Amitabha, catalogue number TOH 49 in the heap of jewels section. The third is the Amitabha's medita Amitabha's Meditation Sutra and is only extant in Chinese. The shorter sutras, according to the Sanskrit scholar Luis Gomez, first appeared to be in its written form in the 1st century CE, possibly in the northwest India in what is now Pakistan. A Sanskrit version of the smaller sutra is extant today, as well as Tibetan and Chinese translations. All the translations show some variation from their Sanskrit source in content and style which can be attributed in part to the cultural and geographical conditions of China and Tibet. The sutra is set in Saraswati 
in Jetta Grove, where the Buddha, surrounded by a large audience, presents to his disciple Shariputra a detailed description of the realm of Sukhavati, a delightful, enlightened and abode free of suffering. Its inhabitants are described as mature beings in an environment where everything enhances their spiritual inclination. The principal Buddha of Sukhavati is addressed as Amitabha, who is Amitabha. The Buddha Sakyamuni further explains how virtuous people who focus single-mindedly on the Buddha Amitabha, Amitabha will obtain rebirth in Sukhavati in their next life, and he urges all to develop faith in his teaching. In support, he cites the similar way in which various Buddhas of the six directions exhort their followers to develop confidence in this teaching in Sukhavati. The sutra ends with a short dialogue between Shariputra and the Buddha Sakyamuni that highlights the difficulty of enlightened activity in this degenerate age. Let us turn to a passage from this sutra, verse 1, verse chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. Therefore, Shariputra, sons and daughters of good family, should completely dedicate all roots of virtue in a respectful manner to be born in the Buddha realm. Why? Because by doing so, they will be able to meet holy beings similar to themselves. Shariputra, one cannot take rebirth in the realm of the Bhagavan, Tathagata, Amitabha, merely with minimal roots of virtue. Shariputra, if those sons and daughters of good family or noble family hear the name of Bhagavan, Tathagata, Amitabha, Amitabha, and keep it in their mind, unwavering for one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven nights, when the hour of their death appears, they will depart in an undeluded state. After they pass away, the Tathagata Amitabha will stand before them, entirely surrounded by Sarsakavata assembly and honoured by a congregation of Bodhisattva. These sons and daughters of good family will be born in Sukhavati world, the Buddha realm of the Bhagavan Tathagata Amitabha. Therefore, Shariputra, having seen its real point, sons and daughters of good family, I declare, ought to respectfully make prayers to reach that Buddha realm. End of quote. There are many practices that surround the practice of Amitabha, Buddha and their pure land. And one of these practices is the praise of the lotus pond. This pond is where we are reborn in the lotus, on the lotus in Amitabha's presence. The praise begins with the name of Amitabha Namo Amitabha. In this lotus pond assembly, as vast as the sea, may Amitabha Tathagata, Avalokitishvara, and Mahasrata Prata on lotus platforms lead beings to ascend the golden steps. As the great vow unfolds, may they all wish to take leave of their defilements. Homage to the lotus pond assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas as vast as the sea. The banquet of Amitabha's deliverance is open now. A multitude of pure Bodhisattvas descends and arrives. They will deliver numerous sentient beings to the land of bliss. All Buddhas joyfully expound their original intent of enlightenment. The land of bliss is pure and splendidly adorned, surpassing all worlds in the ten direction. Names associated with the three wretched realms aren't even found there, only natural sounds of joy. It is wide, open, vast and sublime. Everything is permanent, subject neither to decay nor change. Its form is really wondrous, foremost in ultimate truth. In the land of bliss all is pure. 
immeasurable and inconceivable Buddha lands of the ten directions can be seen as clearly if we were looking at our own reflection in a bright mirror. The land of bliss is a realm of natural and spontaneous manifestation. Food, dress, lodging, transport, study, recreation, every sort of daily need are readily available according to our thoughts. They come and go as we wish. Food in the land of bliss, all is readily available as we wish, like chairs, tables, bowls, utensils made of the seven jewels. They appear before us naturally filled with food of a myriad flavors. Having taken the meal, we feel relaxed, soft, and unattached to the taste of food. Our energy is replenished and the body excretes no waste. Once the meal is finished, the tables, bowls, and utensils disappear, only to reappear as we wish. There is no labor or effort involved. Clothes in the land of bliss, wonderful and beautiful clothing appears whenever we wish for it. It appears naturally on our body and fits perfectly without sewing, measurement, dyeing, or washing. Whatever decorative ornaments we wish will naturally manifest on our person. Their splendor and beauty are such that they cannot be described thoroughly through comparison or analogy. Lodging in the land of bliss, the lecture halls, practice room, palaces, mansions and pagodas are adorned with the seven jewels. They manifest naturally and their splendor far surpassed that of any heavenly palace. All structures in the land of bliss, whether large or small, few or many, above or below, coming or going, appear before us as we please. All furnitures and fixtures manifest as we wish. All materials in the land of bliss. All materials are bright, unique in form and shape. Their wondrous splendor is such that they cannot be explicitly described. Such are the beauties of the land of Sukhavati. Today we have talked about Amitabha, this artwork, Amitabha going out to meet their disciple at the time of death, their iconography, their role in Buddhist cosmology, their devotional practices and significance. If you have liked this episode, please write to me at awake.star.sky at gmail.com. Tell me what you like, what you enjoyed, what you would like to see more of. You can also submit artwork that you want me to comment about. Thank you.